Fear stops us from achieving our true greatness. Are you a professional woman who is feeling stuck, unmotivated, or burned out? Are you worried about your wellness? Are you letting fear stop you from crushing your goals? If you answered yes to any or all of these, then this is the podcast for you. Dr. Charmaine Gregory, Night Shift Emergency Physician, Burnout Thriver, and Wellness Champion, along with everyday heroes just like you, will explore how to face fear in our lives and emerge victoriously. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. Be sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified when the next video comes out. It only takes two seconds to make two clicks. So let's do it. Let's get back to the video. Hello, hello. How is everybody doing? This is Dr. G. This week is the big reveal. So some of you have been following my social media and you already know where Big Adventure 2021 is located, which is fine because I know you have been asking me for the backstory. You have been asking me how did we make a decision to move so far away and do so sight unseen. So it is indeed a, if you can see my shirt, which, you know, you, mostly people who are watching on LinkedIn and on Facebook, as well as YouTube, you can see my shirt, but my shirt says fearless. And this awesome shirt is, was a gift from Sammy Fredericks, who writes amazing books for children talking about finance and giving them an education about money. So if you have not checked her out, definitely check her out. Okay. And she was also featured on the podcast recently and uh, through the highlights uh, over Black History Month. So definitely check that out as well. So if you listen to last week's show, then you know that there were a couple of cliffhangers. Okay. So I talked about how 10 years ago, we were thinking about moving abroad, living abroad, mainly because we have a desire for our children to have world citizenship. So we would like them to be able to experience different cultures. And the best way to experience that is by full immersion. So being in the culture and experiencing it is a phenomenal, phenomenal way in which to achieve this. So we decided very a little bit ago, um, more than 10 years ago, but 10 years ago was when we actually took action towards this plan. And at that time, we had my son and we were planning on having other children, obviously. And um, we did not have things in place for we I had a job and he, my husband could definitely work abroad. But my mom was not retired. His mom was not retired. It just was not the right time. Now, fast forward to 2020, when uh, all kinds of crazy things happened, including the pandemic, of course. But what that taught us is that my husband has portability for his work now. So that is incredible. And uh, that was a huge game changer. And so now things were in place because my mom had retired. She'd actually been retired for almost nine years. And um, his mom had retired. She retired within the last year and a half. And things were just in place to have all of us travel together and be part of this adventure. So Nothing happens before it's time. I'm a firm believer in this. I believe in putting positive energy out and getting it back tenfold. I also believe that, you know, everything that happens in your life really happens for a reason. And, you know, you may have agenda, but your agenda may not be coinciding with what is destined for you. It wasn't destined for us to make this move at the time when we thought we would, when we thought we were going to be in Australia. <laughs> Obviously, that was not the case. And so here we are, you know, on this adventure now, you know, some years later, and everything is set in place. We have both our moms with us. You know, they're both retired. They're going to be able to enjoy life in the golden years with, you know, a different lifestyle, you know, much improved uh, lifestyle and quality of life. So we are very excited, very grateful for that piece. Now, I shared with you also uh, my 
personal migration story. So I shared with you how we decided to come to the United States basically because my mom was listening, which I still think is absolutely nuts because if it were me and I were the mom and it was one of my children, it would never have occurred. Okay. So just let's put, let's just put that out there. So my mom listened to me when I approached her at eight years old and declared that I was going to become a doctor. And she was looking at the the fact that there is, at the time, there was one medical school and on the island, and it served not just Jamaica, but it also served Trinidad and Barbados and several other islands. And so there are a lot of very bright people that are competing to be part of this curricula. And so she was, not that she was doubting my ability, but she was just wanting to make sure that I had every opportunity to realize a dream. So she said, okay, well, this might be a good time for us to move to the States where you have the opportunity to be part of the secondary education system and then, you know, be able to transition into the tertiary, uh, hopefully with ease. And so at 10 years old, I was 10, she was 33. And um, she basically uh, gave up her entire life, um, put her belongings into suitcases and left the country that she'd known her entire life with $40 in her pocket and two suitcases. I, I still marvel at that because honestly, like I said, if I were the parent and one of my children said, hey, I want to be a doctor. And it meant that I had to give up everything I'd ever known and start from complete scratch in a brand new place. I don't know if I would do it. My fearlessness does not extend that far, I guess. <laughs> um, so, so that was my migration story. So now we are talking about, this is where this is such a powerful thing because there are so many parallels to this. So I told you that when we first tried to move abroad, which is when we're trying to go to Australia, um, you know, everything was not in place. And so that was not meant to be. I also told you that our initial, so my mom and I's migration story from Jamaica was such that, you know, we literally came here with, with $40 in two suitcases, you know, and started from scratch. Now, as a family, so now we are, we are, I guess, migrating again. I don't know. We're migrating again as a family. And now we have my husband, who is American, and my three children, who are American, my mother-in-law, who is American, right? So we are now being a part of their first migration story. This is my mom and I's second migration story. This is my mother-in-law, my husband, and my three cherubs first migration story. So now the scenario is very different because, and I'll talk a little bit more about this, but we are literally moving, we literally moved everything. Okay. We, we took we took three households. So we had my mother-in-law's house, we had my mom's house, and then we had our house. And we had to debulk. And I talked a little bit about the debulking last time and how, how amazing it was that we gave away so much and we still had three truckloads of 1-800-GOT-JUNK to fill. And we still had things after that. And we peered down tremendously. We still had a lot that we had to get rid of. And despite all of that, we still were able to fill uh, basically one and a half containers. We filled a 40 foot high container and we also um, have part of a 20 foot container. I <laughs> just mind blown, just absolutely can't understand it. But anyway, so there's that. And so now, you know, you parallel that to two suitcases and $40 to a 40 foot high low, high computer, high container and a partial 20 foot container across the world, essentially to our new location. Very different migration story. Very different. <laughs> When we came from Jamaica to the U.S., we literally were on like a budget flight. You know, it was bare minimum because obviously we didn't have a lot. And like I said, we were starting from scratch. This time when we were migrating as a family, we traveled first class. You know, we had all the amenities. It was just very different experience from what my mom and I had. So that, I thought I was an interesting parallel. I thought I would uh, digress as a tad just to kind of share that with you. And so I also talked about last time in episode 113 about 
the gratitude, the immense gratitude I have for the impact of the Michigan community on not only my career, but also my personal growth. I have learned a ton in the last 16 years of living in Michigan. Uh, actually, there's going to be a very soft spot in my heart always because I literally got done with residency at Duke University Medical Center in emergency medicine. And as soon as I got done, my first job was actually in Michigan. And I stayed with that said job until I you know, left to come to my new location. So lots of gratitude, lots of growth. Michigan's awesome. My children loved living in Michigan as well. And so nothing but love for Michigan. <laughs> and, and this is no like color allegiance, like there's no blue or green or whatever in there. This is just the state of Michigan. Okay. So for all you sport fans, we're like, well, when you say Michigan, do you mean no or do you mean sports in green? No, no sports situation, no sports orientation, I guess just pure love for the state of Michigan. Okay. And then I got asked, okay, so how could you possibly move so far away without ever seeing the place? Wasn't I afraid or am I not afraid? Well, heck yeah, I'm afraid, right? But just like everything else, just like when I got on that plane at 10 years old, going to a new place, not knowing what was going to happen or where the trajectory of my life was going to be, it's the same thing. It didn't stop me from doing it, but uh, yeah, I had some fear. And perhaps there was a lot more fearlessness at age 10 than there was when I you know, packed up my stuff at 16 years old and went off to college, right? I mean, there, every stage is gonna have a different level of tolerance of fear. And so now at 46, you know, making a transition this great where we're literally, we literally sold everything that we had in, in uh, Michigan, and then we committed to move our entire lives 7,000 plus miles away, right? We committed to this. We said, okay, we're going we're gonna to bring mom, we're going to bring mom, and we're going to bring the cherubs, and we're going to bring ourselves, and we're going to start a new life here. Now, yes, of course, there was definitely fear, but then here are the things. Here's, here's the deal. Like I talk about my fear of public speaking and how intense it is. I've talked about this before with the sweaty palms, the palpitations, the, you know, these ruminating thoughts that are not very productive. All those things, energy can be channeled. And I have learned over the years to channel it, to turn it from potentially detrimental energy to actually kinetic positive energy, right? So the same thing is true for this experience. So when I think of, when I get thwarted or there's an attempt for me to be thwarted by the fear of this moving to a place you've never seen, all you have is what people have told you and the YouTube renditions of the place, that's all you have, right, to go on. But how can all the people that I talk to be wrong? I literally talk to a lot of people and I heard only one thing that was negative, and the thing that was negative wasn't even anything to do with the place itself. And so that tells me that this is a good decision. So I didn't have to see it before. I just knew that this is where we need to go. So that's how I, well, I should say, I shouldn't just keep saying I, because it's really a we, because my husband's committed to this, my mother-in-law is committed to this, and so is my mom. And so we all have committed to change our environment, and we've done so based on faith, right? We, have, we had the faith that this was going to be our home. Everything was lining up such that this would be our new home, and it would be amazing. And so that's why we did it, okay? So um, that's how I was able to go forward with this, despite the fact that, um, despite the fact that we had not seen the place and we had no idea, we knew no one here. <laughs> we said, you know what, what's the worst thing that can happen? <laughs> and we just went for it. We just went for it. So we covered, you know, was I afraid to move so far? Yes. Okay. And then I also told you that I did something, I, I've 
you know, I think I probably started practicing this crazy face and fear thing since I was about 10, maybe younger. And it has really not stopped. And I think it has actually intensified. And I'm constantly doing that because I feel like I'm not growing. And if I'm not growing, then I'm not where I'm supposed to be. And so, you know, I hope that I will have no regrets. And I hope that I will be able to facilitate something like that for my family as well. And so this Big Adventure 2021 is all about that, having no regrets. And lastly, I talked about some moving abroad. Three tips that I shared in the last episode was, number one, you have more stuff than you actually need, which, oh my God, such fact, such fact. I just, I just alluded to it when I talked about how we gave away, a t- I mean, a ton ton of furniture, a ton of everything. And we still had three truckloads of 1-800-GOT-JUNK. I mean, mind-blowing. I still can't believe that. And then we had to throw away items even after that. And we still filled up a huge container, a 40-foot high, and part of a 20-footer. It's amazing. Number two, shipping cars can be pricey. I continue to finish talking about that particular story because I started telling you that I had an issue when I didn't realize that I could just, you know, ship my car. Like there was more to it. I don't know. Well, if you've never done it before, how would you know, right? So I, hopefully if you ever decide to do this, this will help you <laughs> so you don't fall into the same trap I did. And then number three is use a real, use a realtor wherever you're going to be going. Don't think that you can just go on realtor.com. And I have no, no stakes in realtor.com. I have no stakes in realtors, period. But this is just practical advice from my own personal experience. You need a realtor because it just makes your life a whole lot easier. They're professionals. They know what they're doing. And, you know, yes, you could potentially look on realtor.com and figure it out, but you know, they are privy to some additional properties and items that you may not be aware of because you're not in the industry. So why not let the professionals help you with something like that, right? Don't, don't spin your wheels unnecessarily. So let me start with the, I'm going to start with the car story. Okay. So the last time I told you that, you know, so I was, I had this like uh, epiphany, epiphany, or I don't know, I guess I was like shocked. I'm not sure what words to use there, but I literally was like, oh, it can't be a big deal to ship cars, right? Just, just ship the cars. Because, you know, we're like doing all the shipping planning. And I was like, okay, let's ship the cars. So come to find out that actually I own the cars in order to ship them. So I didn't realize this because, you know, we've had multiple cars over the years. We've leased some. We've, we've bought some. We have um, multiple iterations of the same. And I could not recall which car had a title, et cetera, et cetera. So it came down time for us to talk about shipping the cars. And so the uh, moving company uh, actually requested a title. So I was like, oh, I think we have a title. But then I look in a drawer and there's only one title. And it is a title for the minivan, right? So the minivan we purchased, we financed it. So it's, it's on payment. So then I look at the title and the title says, you know, lean holder, Honda finance. It's like, oh, yes. we have a title. Uh, so we call Honda and we're like, hey, you know, we're about to ship the car to Big Adventure 2021. You know, is that, is, is it okay? Honda was like, no, that's not okay. You cannot leave the country with the car. <laughs> have to laugh every time I think about it because I can't believe how naive I was. They're like, no, are you nuts? You can't leave the country with the car. <laughs> it's a lean on the car. I'm like, oh, okay. So what does that mean? Okay. So the car is not an old car. It's a new car. Like literally we got that car in 20, got both the cars in 2019. And so they were like, oh yeah, no, you need, you need to like pay off the car. So like, okay. We go ahead, we pay off the car. We get a title now in my name and not in my name and Honda financing's name. (laughs) And so like, okay, good. So that car is done. The other car, which is the BMW X1, we were leasing that one because, you know, I didn't see the need to buy one of those. I figured I'd just lease it because I like changing the cars out really, you know, relatively frequently. And so we were leasing that car and then I realized I did not even have a title for that car, period. So the previous car, like I said, the one that we actually, um, the one that we actually uh, purchased, 
you know, but on finance. Um, basically, we had that title, but it had the Honda finance name still on there, including mine. And then the um, the X one, we did not have a title at all. So then I'm like, how come we have a title? What's going on? Did I misplace it or whatever? No, this woman did not remember that when you lease a car, you don't get the title. You don't get the title until you pay the thing off if you choose to do so at the end of the lease. I forgot that, you know, multiple cars throughout the years. I just don't keep track of that stuff. And so at last we had to pay off that car as well. Now we had a third car, which was my mom's car, which was the um, Honda CRV. And so we ended up having to pay that car off. So we ended up having to pay off three cars. I was like, Oh, this hurts. Ouch. And so, you know, it was just like a big mind, like, blow right and like oh my gosh i can't believe this is unexpected expense now i have to pay off three cars so to pay off the three cars we get the titles and then we're like okay how do we get these you know which ones are we going to take with us and then when we looked into it it would have cost us sixty five hundred dollars per car and i'm like we started calculating we're like all right well we paid them off you know like how you know would this have, is this worth it if we just can we like is it worth it to have the payoff as well as the transport costs? Um, is it worth it to bring them essentially, or should we just buy new cars when we get there? So when we did the calculation, well, my husband did calculations at full disclosure because I'm not really a numbers person. He really is a numbers person. And so he did the calculation and he was like, no, we need to just sell these cars. So then the next problem was, okay, so we, bit the bullet, they paid off these three cars. And we think we're thinking, okay, we're ready now to, you know, figure out shipping or not. So then we decide that we're not going to ship because it is going to be too expensive. We 12, 000, well, $13,000 to ship the cars alone. And I won't, I'm going to get into the whole thing about shipping the belongings. That's a whole other story. But so, you know, that would have been $13,000 by itself to ship the two cars. So didn't seem like it was worth it in addition to having to pay them off if prior to, to get the titles, okay? So now we're like, okay, so how do we sell these cars? How do we sell these cars? We have a time crunch. We need to get this cash, you know, stat. So we started researching different ways in which to do that. And it turned out that um, there are a couple of online car sellers that you can work with, which, you know, in this environment, that's literally, they will, you know, you know, you literally do everything online and then they come, they pick up a car and then send you the check. Amazing, amazing. Who would have thought that would be even possible? But we looked into a couple of them. We ended up utilizing one called Room, so V R O O M. And again, I have no, I have no affiliation with Room. Just so you know, I just want to put that out there. But so one word, expensive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, this whole move has been very expensive. But yeah, that's a whole other story. Um, so, so, so we went with Vroom and once we got the hang of the process, getting three cars sold actually worked out to be pretty smooth. So, um, like I said, what you do is you get on there, you open a profile, you basically, uh, send them the title and then they send you the cash. So, uh, that was cool. We appreciated that. And so we were able to sell the three cars ultimately. So we did not bring any cars. <laughs> oh my, it was such a lesson. Oh my God. So I'm hoping that me telling you the story is going to help you because if you ever have to move abroad, definitely look into the cost of shipping the car and you have to make sure you own the car first. Look into the cost of shipping the car versus getting a car once you get there. Now, some places, um, this is not, you know, it's not worth it to, to, to not ship them. Whereas others, it's like definitely worth it. Like this place is definitely worth it. Like us selling the cars and then coming here and buying cars, much better deal than if we had um, done all the things and, and shipped it. So, and of course I was keeping into account when I said the numbers, I was also keeping into account how much we owed on each car, right? It definitely was much more economical to just come to sell them, come here and buy new ones. So we actually bought new cars yesterday. So we have cars now, <laughs> but when we first got here, we obviously didn't have a car. So 
we had, and you need a car. We actually just rented a car, rented a minivan. And um, we had that for the time that we we're trying to run around, get everything organized so that we would be settled. And then we bought, we just picked up two cars yesterday. So super excited about that because we got another Odyssey. You know, we love, we love Hondas. We have, a, we love the Honda Odyssey because that's our favorite minivan. And um, so we got a brand new 2021 Odyssey. So I'm excited about that. And then we got um, our moms a Kia Sportage, which is actually a pretty neat car. I had not looked at it before. And so we have two new cars now. Yay. So now we are mobile. The next thing I want to talk about is selling the house and the transfer of positive energy. So the house that we ended up living in last, um, that house, we moved into that house. It was essentially like our dream house. Uh, well, yeah, I would say it's our dream house, dream house, because it was a big, big step up from where we were living before, because we were a growing family living in a three bedroom home that was probably about 1700 square feet, which I mean, it's fine. Um, it worked really well for us uh, until we were expecting our third child. And so then it was a little bit cramped. So we started looking around for homes and it, it just so happened that at the time when we we're doing this was when the housing market was at its lowest price wise, purchase price wise. And so we were able to get an amazing deal on a brand new house. We actually bought a spec home and then we customized it to fit our needs and then we purchased it. So we got it at a really great price and great neighborhood. And um, we basically over the years have had lots of memories in there. We have, you know, had many, many gardens and many, many water gun fights and all kind of things in the house. Absolutely love the house. And it was, uh, you know, the place where my youngest, uh, where our youngest uh, was born, brought home, et cetera, lived her entire life. And, um, Great, 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 great house. Love the house, okay? And so I thought we were going to be living there forever, right? But then always in the back of my mind was, at some point, we probably are going to move abroad. <laughs> so, so it was it was our forever home for Michigan. It was our forever Michigan home. <laughs> so basically, we had to do some things to the house. But you know, when you're living there, there's really not a whole lot of urgency to do all those things because you're just kind of like, ah, you know, it's not that big a deal. We'll, you know, we'll do it later. We'll do it next year. We'll do it, you know, the following year. Cause we had every intention when we first moved into the house to basically, cause the whole of the first floor is hardwood or tile. And so we had every intention of taking the carpet up on the second floor and putting in hardwood, like, or I want I actually want a bamboo. I like, I wanted to like redo the entire flooring, but we never got to it. Like life happened, things happened. We just never got to it. We did, however, redo the children's bathroom. We redid the children's bathroom about a year ago and it was awesome. Like we just decided, okay, we need to start redoing these bathrooms. We started with theirs and we redid the bathroom. It was absolutely fabulous. Loved it. And, uh, you know, of course ours was on the back burner again, once again, because you're living there, you have life going on. You're not really thinking, oh my goodness, it's an urgency to do this. We ended up having now because we're, we have to sell the house, right? <laughs> we're like, oh no, we got to sell this house. We can't keep this house. So we have to sell the house. And so now it was like crunch time to do all the things. So we got everybody in. We had the roof guy come check the roof, make sure there was no issues. We had that done. We had the heater guy come, the air conditioner guy. We had every single person come and like totally check the place out and make sure everything was good. And then we had our contractor come in and um, redo our bathroom, paint the entire house. I mean, we wanted the thing to look like moving ready, to look moving ready, to be moving ready, and to be the best possible setup for the next family. Because I told you before that I'm a very firm believer in positive energy emission. And if we, we had such positive experiences in the house and we wanted the house to be welcoming to the next family so that they would have positive energies from the house. And so we wanted it to be in such high condition that they would love it immediately and they would see it as a great match for them. 
And so we redid the bathroom. We redid a bunch of things in the house. We basically changed, we put in like really nice carpet all up in the top. We weren't able to, we didn't, we weren't able to do the hardwood just because of timing and the, you know, all that stuff. But we redid everything, painted it, looks, it looked, literally looked brand new. Then we were just not sure like what was going to happen. And it so happened. So I told you when we bought the house, it was a time in our life when we needed a house upgrade. And it just so happened that it was a low in the market as far as pricing. And then we were getting ready to sell this house. And it turns out that there was no inventory for houses that size. Like literally, because the house is a big house. It's a pair. Of, well, for me, it's big. It may not be big for most people, um, but it was like a 3,500 square feet square foot house. Okay, and that was the living space. So that's up the two levels, and then it had like a 1,500 square foot unfinished basement with an egress window and rough plumbing. So the possibilities are endless for like another huge amount of square footage of living space in that house, and so. And it had three car garage and it had like um, it had like it we, we had put in like an irrigation system for the garden because we have like a we had like a 20 foot garden beds on the side of the house behind the third garage. I mean, the house is nice We have a basketball court in the backyard. We have a paved patio in the backyard. Um, we had like, you know, we landscaped the whole thing. You know, we had big trees in the back, big maple trees in the back. It it's a nice house. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, apparently there aren't very many houses and the house was four bedrooms. It had a bonus bedroom or a bonus office on the first floor. It had um, multiple bonus rooms. It had a formal dining room. It had a formal living room. It had a family room. Like it just had, it's a nice house. It had a lot of space. So we weren't sure though, if it were a house that size was going to sell uh, quickly. But then we found out that there were not, there aren't very many houses that size available on the market. And now that everybody is learning at home, which we already were doing because the kids have been homeschooled their entire life and working at home, which we already were doing too, because my husband works from home mostly, people need more space. They need an office, they need a classroom, they need all things. And so the house offered that. And so we just wanted to make sure that we left that house in such a positive state and that it was immaculate for the next family. And so we were just so overjoyed because we put the house on the market on, fr on the Friday and we had, we put it on the market on the Friday at like two o'clock in the afternoon. And literally by the time you know, we had we, the first showing opportunity was like three or four o'clock. We already had people booked for those showings. There were two that booked that same day. And then we had seven on the Saturday. And then we had on by the Sunday, we had offers in. And then we put a lock on the offers by Sunday night. And then we ended up getting um, amazing, amazing families that were looking towards getting the home. And then we ultimately um, went with one of the families. And, you know, it just the transfer of energy, I just know is going to be amazing. And they're going to have many years of great memories in that house. And it just makes me feel good about that because the way I look at it is there may be some sentimental attachment to the memories that you that you produce in the house, but it's good to know that you can transfer that to somebody else or to some other people. And so that was the deal with the house. So I am super excited about that. So we were able to sell the house. That was awesome. And then we were able to sell the condo in, in Ohio. Um, we were able to actually sell that one um, pretty quickly and as is, which we didn't have to do any work on it. So that was fantastic. All right. So the next thing I want to do is I want to give a shout out to my amazing realtor that helped us to find not only our house, which is the house that I'm currently in our office. So this room is going to be our office. And I know you can't see it from the podcast, like if you listen to the podcast, but if you're watching, my back is to the window that's to the um, front of the house. And, you know, so we have, and there's a lot of echo because we have no furniture, because our furniture is not going to get here probably until May. That's a whole other story. 
This house is a four bedroom house. So the bedroom, one bedroom is on the first floor, which is the one that we're using as the office. And then we have a full bathroom associated with that bedroom. And then we have, um, we have a very nice kitchen, dining, living area, two car garage with garage door opener. Awesome. So dope. Oh my goodness. And then upstairs we have a ginormous patio that we can literally stand in the patio and see the ocean and we can see the mountains. Oh my God. Oh my God. I have to pitch myself that this is for real. Absolutely amazing. And you know, good size rooms. We're super happy with this house. Okay. And on top of that, our moms are literally living in the house right next door. So a little bit of a backstory. Both of our moms are elders. One, my mother-in-law has some problems with her knees, so she can't really do stairs. And so the previous house that I was talking about that we had, there was not a bedroom on the first floor. So she unfortunately had to navigate the stairs in that house. And every time she did, it would make us very nervous. And so we committed to a ranch style home wherever we moved. Okay. So they had to have a ranch style home. We didn't care about whether it was, you know, there were stairs or not. We were looking for homes that were in close proximity that would have what we needed and also have what they needed. And, we would find homes that would be so far in distance apart and it was getting pretty challenging. And I think right around um, November, I was starting to get a little bit doubtful. I was like, Oh my gosh, this is not going to work out. But we just happened to look cause we were stalking the MLS, the flex MLS. We were stalking that like every day, several times a day. And one morning I literally looked and I saw what looked like the perfect house for the moms. It was brand new build. It is a three bedroom. It was spacious, modern kitchen, all the amenities, you know, washer, dryer, laundry room, the whole works like super nice house that they would be very comfortable in and also had two car garage, et cetera, et cetera. And so I was like, oh my God, this house is awesome. This is perfect for them. And so as we're looking at the house, uh, the photos, my husband goes, wait a minute, that photo's vantage point looks like it's from across the street. What's across the street? And lo and behold, when we looked at what was across the street, it's this house that we're in right now. And he was like, oh my God, because we, we wouldn't be able to fit in a three bedroom we need a four bedroom. And so, you know, the roof, the house that for them was a three bedroom. So that would have been perfect for them. But then it was a question of, well, where would we live? Right. So he looks and he sees that a vantage point for one of the pictures is actually from across the street. And so he's like, oh my gosh, look at that. And so he looks up the address and sure enough, it was this house. And it turned out that this house is the four bedroom in the entire, it's like a the private subdivision and um, in a little, in a little gated community. And, you know, there were five houses just like the mom's house that were built three bedrooms, right? And only one four bedroom. And so we had to jump on it. It was such, it was like so exciting because we were like bidding and we we're like, no, we want to get that house. We had to get that house. And then we ended up getting not the house across the street, but the one right next to us. So we literally, we're in one house and moms are living in the house right next door. And we literally can just go out through the gate and go right you know, to our yard and go right over to their house and vice versa. And it's absolutely Amazing. And so these are all the things that have come together that tell me that even though we had never seen this place, we never, we never been to this place, that this was the right place for us. When all these things started coming together, it became very clear that this was where we need to be. Um, shout out to Claire Delgado. Okay. She's absolutely amazing. She helped us every step of the way. She actually helped me when we first got here to go and do all the things that we need to do for getting light and getting water and all the things. She is absolutely amazing. So if you ever have to move to Guam, which is where we are, Guam is where we relocated to please make sure that you check out Claire Delgado because she is amazing with capital letters and exclamation points. She just absolutely helped us tremendously. And um, we were so grateful. And I told her already that she has a 
family for life in us. And anytime we're buying anything or we're moving, we're going to be using her. And anybody we know that is moving here, we're going to be referring to her because she was just absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal. And so I'm going to wrap this up because I have been literally on here for 40 plus minutes. And I know that attention spans are limited and I want, I have so much more to share with you, but I wanted to at least let you know that the destination of Big Adventure 2021 is Guam in Micronesia, Guam. And um, there, I have so many stories for you, so many stories. But yes, fearlessness has brought us to Guam. This is our new home. And we are very excited about getting to know the community here, getting to be part of the community, serving the community here, and just having amazing, amazing memories here. And um, yeah, so that's the deal. That's Big Adventure 2021. This is where we ended up. Whoop, whoop. And so definitely uh, I am probably, I'm contemplating whether or not, and you can let me know if it's something that you want, but I have many, 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 many more stories of our move. I can definitely start integrating these into uh, subsequent podcast episodes if that's something that you're interested in. I'm more than happy to do that. And um, if you are thinking about moving abroad or you just want to live vicariously through us, that's fine too. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, so that's this week's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are coming to you live with this broadcast from Guam in the village of Manilao, which is where we live. The beaches are amazing. I will be sharing that on my Instagram as well as my Facebook. So <laughs> you definitely look out for that, for, for that uh, kind of content. So excited to come to you from Guam. <laughs> to share with you this crazy, crazy, crazy move, 7,000 miles sight on scene to Guam, our new home. I hope that you will be strong, be brave, and unleash your greatness. Until next time. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Again, I'm Dr. G. And if you like this episode, be sure to subscribe so that you can get notified of when the next episode is going to be. And also, I'll catch you next time. Have a great one. Be strong, be brave, and unleash your greatness.